and it's Mary here at Images on the Page. I thought I'd kind of do an intro, five books to get to know me type of thing. Books that really got me started as a reader. I got the idea from Matthew Sharapa and I'll leave his information down below because if you haven't checked him out, you need to. His thoughts are amazing. He's so eloquent and he reads so many variety of things. Like he just doesn't read just one genre. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first one I have to, have to, have to mention is Wild Magic by Tamora Pierce. I've read all of her books multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, this is the one I started with, actually. It's technically the second season, or her, her, the second series in her Tortal universe. But me and, I read this in middle school, so me and a middle school friend d found her books and she decided she was going to read the Alana series and I was going to read these and we were going to talk about it. Well, I read the first one, blew through it, read the second one, blew through it, read the whole series in like less than a week, and then I started bugging her for the Alana series. So this is the one I actually got started with, and it's probably still one of my favorites, and if you haven't read Tomorrow Pierce, you just, oh, you need to. She has so many distinct, different female heroines who all deal with different things, and they're not cookie cutter, they're not anything like that. They're just so unique as individuals and they all have different struggles and different wishes and goals and different voices and it's just so, so phenomenal. She's kind of what really got me into fantasy. She's also really got me, what got me into female heroines and feminism and so everything kind of goes back to her because before her I was trying to read what everyone else was reading like Babysitter Club and stuff like that. And not to say anything's wrong with that, they just weren't my cup of tea. So I was just not a big reader. I didn't like it. And then I picked up these and I love them. This one is, um, this one specifically is about a young girl named Dane who doesn't think that she has magic, but it is found out that she has wild magic. So magic that is, um, connects to everything, you know, in the wild and she can talk to animals. And it's just like her journey from leaving home to going to a new big bustling city and it's just you have to read these you have to you have to yeah <laughs> the second one of course which I'm pretty sure is on many booktubers list is of course Harry Potter this one I read not too long after I read the Tamara Pierce book uh, they kind of came out in the same time but I read I'm pretty sure I read this one first but everyone knows this is really good. Um, I really loved it as a kid. I have thoughts on it now. Not as big of a fan as I used to be, and I can talk about that later, but it is still a really great fantasy book. Then the next one, oh, before that, I should probably get into what I loved as a child. I still love these. I still love these. Anything Dr. Seuss. His way with words and just making them up was so cool. Like, it was just like, it was always like, you're taught in school, like, you have to follow these rules for the sentences and whatnot. And then, then he just, he never did. He made up his own words that made sense in the context and what was happening. And it was just, I still love these. I still love these. And then kind of the one that started my progression from middle school to adult reading was this one, weirdly enough called Mixed Messages by Linda Lale Miller. I had actually been looking for a book with the same title from a different author and this was like back when I was middle school so I didn't even think that like you would have two books with the same title so I didn't look at the author's name. The other one I was supposed to get was very like cute and fluffy and appropriate for a young adult. This one was not um, and so that kind of started my journey into the more adult books, the more racy books. I don't read much of her now. Um, it, she does mostly romance. It's not my biggest genre, but she is very much widely opened my eyes that like you could have those kind of things and stories and people talked about them and stuff like that. Another one I have to talk about is this one, Italian ooh, Revenant by Michael A. Stackpole. Oh, there it is. I know he's done some like Star Wars, I think, series written for them, um, but he's only done like a couple of individual 
or own, like where he's created everything himself. Fantasy novels. This is a standalone. This is the one I started with. He also did uh, Dragon Crown Trilogy and a prequel to that, which was also fantastic. But this one, I think, is slightly more my favorite. It's about this... Oh, I'm just going to read the back. So when justice and duty collide, justice is the select of Talion endowed with the fearsome magic and lethal martial skills roam the shattered empire, crushing the lawless and championing the oppressed. Their word is law and their judgment binding on highborn and low. No one is a just and born and was once, once was the free nation of Sinjaria. Orphaned in the war of conquest with the nation of Hamas, he traveled too far, Taliana, and secured the right to become a justice. Now, years later, the master of all Italians has a dangerous assignment for Nolan. He is to guard the life of the king who destroyed Sinjaria and slaughtered his family. Alone, Nolan ventures into the political maelstrom that is the court of Hamas to stop an assassin even his masters think cannot be slain. So yeah, this, I still love this book. It's so well written. It's so interesting, this idea that justices, they actually get imbued with this magic to be able to become a justice, kind of like a justice of the peace, um, where they can decide life or death for some criminals. Um, it's it's not taken lightly in this. It's kind of very, like, there's a lot of things and they have to, at the end, if they do decide to take a life, they have to counsel with it. Like, they have to prove that it was just to not another person, but to like this other entity um, that is impartial completely. And if they can't, then they are stripped or killed. Well, they're, they're stripped of their powers or killed. But this really got me into the adult fantasy and how just like fantastic that is. And I've loved this one and I love the other one. I actually need to go back and reread the other one because it's been, I read this in high school. It's been a very long time. And then the last one, oops, the last one, unfortunately, I do not have because I have actually loaned to a friend because it is absolutely phenomenal. This actually is what got me into queer fantasy. It is um, Luck in the Shadows, on that side now, um, by Lynn, Lynn Fwalling. She did seven book series in the Night Runner series. Absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It starts with these two guys who well one is kind of like from a back country hillbilly type thing except for it's on another world but that's like the best description so he's very sheltered very naive and the other one is um it's called iron fey the long-lived ones um because their lives span for a long time but he is now living in one of the big cities not on iron fey which is like in another he's left that and he kind of takes so the one who's Iron Fae is Sergil, and the one who is kind of a backcountry kid is Alec. And Sergil kind of takes Alec under his wing um, because Alec actually kind of gets, and this isn't a spoiler, it happens like within the first 10, 20 pages of the book, Alec gets thrown in jail because he was using an alias of Sergil that was wanted for something or other. And so Sergal is also in jail under another alias, um, and he decides to get them out. And so he, Sergal is a thief, he's a noble, he's a spy for the crown, um, and many, many other things, and it's amazing. So he kind of takes Alec under his wing, and what's really cool is how Lynn Welling also handles like sexuality in this book, because we find out, well, Alec assumes he's straight, and we find out Sergil is bi, and Sergil kind of introduces Alec to the pleasures of the flesh. I don't know, the whorehouses, but like they all have different lights. It's called the Street of Lights, which is like one of my favorite scenes in the book. And he's explaining them how like a different colored light means who you're interested in. And there's all options, like if you're a male looking for a male, male looking for a woman, a woman looking for a woman or a looking a woman looking for a man and like they all have different colored lights and it's just like the way it's approached is so commonplace and so interesting and then of course it doesn't happen in the first book but as the series goes on they of course end up having in a relationship and it's just it's fantastic and it's so well done and they because there's seven of them they actually end up going to Arnfe at one point and 
I absolutely love, love, love the series. I wish she wrote another one called The Tamir Triad, which I still need to finish. And I just wish more, she would write more. I just want more, more. That's all I want is more. Well, those are kind of like the five books or I guess authors that kind of interest, introduce me kind of my progression and what I'm reading now. I'm reading a lot more queer literature, more hopefully queer fantasy. I'm, I'm looking hard and long, that's, that's what it is, hard and long to um, find more diverse books really gotten into kind of the own voices thing. So yeah, ta-ta for now.